What's up my friends, welcome to New View Tech Review. My name is David Gelly, and today we are reviewing the Google Pixel 3 XL. I hear it's top notch. Okay, that was stupid. Can we do that again? We can't? Why not? We're out of film? We don't use film to make these videos. No one does. Okay, just whatever. Okay, whatever. You know, we'll just keep that take and just make sure to edit out all of this. Okay? So, the Google Pixel 3 XL is here. It's actually been here since October 18th, but for small independent creators like me, well, it's not as easy to get reviews done as quickly or as often as we'd like. But late to the party or not, here we are. I've had this phone for well over a month now, and I feel that I have a pretty good grasp on how it compares to its predecessor. So with that being said, let's jump right into the review. The Pixel 3 XL stands 6.2 inches tall, is 3 inches wide, 7.9 millimeters thick, and weighs 6.5 ounces. Gorilla Glass 5 is found on the front and back, but half of the two-tone back now consists of a soft touch material, making it very comfortable to hold, and very susceptible to scratches. Also on the back is the fingerprint scanner, which I've actually found to be pretty hit or miss. One feature that they kept from the Pixel 2 is the swipe for notifications action, which I absolutely love. This can be activated within gesture settings. Surrounding the phone is a glossy aluminum frame that houses the power and volume buttons, which are all positioned on the right side of the device. On the bottom, you'll find a Type-C charging port as well as the relocated SIM card slot. This year, the Pixel lineup is IP68 water and dust resistant, up from IP67 in last year's models. You can find the Pixel 3 XL in the following colors, clearly white, just black, and not pink. Wow! Whoever comes up with these names at Google must really put their job on the back burner. The display comes in at 6.3 inches diagonally and has a QHD OLED panel with a PPI of 523, down from 538 on last year's model. It's a beautiful sharp display with great color, but unfortunately its max brightness is a little pathetic. Even indoors it can feel just a bit too dim. And of course, the talk of the town is that new notch on the top, which Google tried extremely hard to hide while announcing the Pixel 3 at the launch event. Nonetheless, here it is in all its glory to give you a nice big smile every time you look at it. The Pixel 3 XL comes with Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 CPU, four gigabytes of RAM, Android Pi 9.0, and storage models of 64 and 128 gigabytes. At this point in time, with Google giving us unlimited cloud storage for free, I don't really see the need for anything above 64 gigabytes, so my recommendation would just be to stick to the base model. Performance is smooth and snappy as should be expected from a Pixel phone. Battery size is down this year from 3520 milliamps on last year's model to 3420 on the Pixel 3 XL. Screen on time is average with nothing impressive to report and standby performance still comes in second to the iPhone. And since the back is now made of all glass, we finally get wireless charging on a Pixel device. Taptic feedback is still nice and sharp, and Active Edge carries over its quirky practicality into the new lineup. As for audio, the Pixel phones keep HTC's dual front firing speakers, which I honestly wasn't too impressed with. Since we now have IP68 water and dust resistance, I'm thinking that they had to do something internally to really seal in those speakers, which in turn made them sound pretty muffled. But over time, I noticed it less and less. Now, with that being said, here's a quick audio sample side by side with my iPhone X. Decibel levels are a bit louder this year, coming in at around 90 decibels, whereas the Pixel 2 XL came in at 82 decibels. And unfortunately, we don't get a headphone jack to plug in those dusty old headphones you have laying around, but Google does provide Pixel Buds with a Type-C connector in the box, which sound great. My only complaint with them would be that they have a weird fit in the ear. And last but not least, we have the cameras, three of them to be exact. On the front, we find two 8 megapixel cameras, 
one being a wide-angle lens with an f2.2 aperture and the other being a standard telephoto lens with an aperture of f1.8. Video can be recorded in 1080p at 30 frames per second. And on the back we find a single 12 megapixel lens with an aperture of f1.8. It can record video in 720p at 240 frames per second, all the way up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Picture quality is as great as you'd expect. DxLMark gave the Pixel 3 camera a rating of 101, up from 98 on the Pixel 2. So we get slightly better image processing, making this one of the top cameras that you can find on a smartphone. Here are a few photo and video samples taken with the front and back cameras. So what does all this information leave us with? Do you buy the $900 phone or not? Well, I'd say that the main reasons to upgrade would be for the bigger display and or wireless charging. The Pixel 2 is great and the Pixel 3 is a little better. So if you have any of the previous models and you're content, then I would just recommend waiting for the Pixel 4. You're not missing out on a whole lot with this variant and don't get me wrong, it's a great phone for sure. I just wasn't quite as impressed as I hoped I'd be. All right, my friends, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed this very late review of the Pixel 3 XL. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.